To begin, I just want to welcome everyone to tonight's presentation of El Museo in Tu Casa. I'm Susanna Temkin. I'm a curator at the museum, and I'm so thrilled to be leading this tour, this virtual tour from Mi Casa. Um, Soisa is the artist's first full-scale museum retrospective in the United States, and today we'll be showing you over seven decades of her art. Uh, the show was organized by the Phillips Collection in Washington, D.C. It traveled to the Museo de Arte de Ponce in Puerto Rico before its final destination here at El Museo. Um, before, before we really get started, and just some technical notes, um, I really enjoy when I give my tours in person, having a sense of interactivity with everyone here, unfortunately. Um, that isn't quite possible in these circumstances, but I hope everyone has noticed that we do have a chat function as part of Zoom. So if you have any questions as we go throughout the tour, please feel free to enter them and we'll be doing a question and answer session at the very end. Um, so again, please you know, take your time and feel free to ask. Uh, this is a first live virtual tour. And again, we're so thrilled that you all have logged in. And we have a number of special guests. We had about over 300 people um, signing up for this. So we're very happy to be welcoming a number of the lenders to the exhibition to this virtual tour. We also have the team from the Phillips Collection, um, including the show's curator, Vesela Stratinovic, who you can see here on the slide with Zelia. And most exciting of all, we have Zelia herself. Um, so Zelia, no sé si quieres eh, decir algunas palabras. Que estoy muy agradecida. Y estoy bien contenta de ustedes. Celia <laughs> just saying that she's very um, happy and grateful to be here. And Zilia has a wonderful voice. So that was a great surprise that we got to hear her singing. Eh, debemos empezar, Zilia. Eh? Debemos empezar. A ver, la obra. Quiero, sí. Ok, qué bueno. Ok. Muy, muy bueno. Muy, muy emocionada. Para nosotros también. So with that, um, I, I welcome you virtually into the galleries of El Museo, which I know um, so many of us are missing being able to see the show. So today I'll be walking you through um, a combination of installation images. So I hope it makes you feel like you're in the space. And also we'll be able to take a look at select works. So this is how we enter the show. Um, Zilia Sanchez Soy Isla, which uh, I already mentioned was organized by the Phillips Collection. The show begins with um, this sort of cabinet of works that have to do with the title Soy Isla, which is a, a running concept of the exhibition throughout. So Soy Isla, or I am an island in English, um, is a metaphor that curator Vesla Stratinovic used um, to present this work. And this concept of the island, um, there's many ways that we can enter Zilia's work through this idea of the island. Um, through her biography, um, Zilia is an Isleña almost all of her life. She was born in Cuba in 1926. From Cuba, um, she actually spent almost a decade of her time here in New York, in Manhattan, another island, even though we forget that sometimes. And then she's been in Puerto Rico since the 1970s. So biographically, uh, her work is very much linked so this concept of being an island, being apart, and yet still always connected. 
Um, in terms of her artwork, as we'll see, it's extremely unique. And so it can be thought of as an island in that um, it's hard to categorize or to insert it into neat categories of what we think of when we think of art history. And this concept of the island we see in her own work. She uses the title in a number of her own pieces, including this video that I'm just gonna take a short moment for us to view. Um, we're watching right now a video documentation that um, Zelia recorded in uh, 2000. So I'll be quiet for a few moments so we can watch it. So this video, I, I feel that it's a really beautiful entry point. Um, as we can see Zelia throwing her piece into the waves and yet it constantly returning. Um, the piece itself, when it's exhibited at El Museo, we see it um, as it appears after it's, excuse me, after it's life in the waves. So just to go back to show you, um, at El Museo, that actual painting um, is presented on a plinth in, in record of this documentation. So from this entry point, the show begins to follow a rough chronology, starting with Zelia's um, early career in the 1950s in Cuba. Oh, I'm sorry, before I get to the 1950s, I actually, I forgot, um, the, the beauty of being able to come to you virtually is that whereas in the exhibition, I can't physically turn the pieces around to show you what they look like from behind. Um, this piece, which again is from that sort of introduction to the show, show Soy Isla, um, what you see on the left is the artwork itself and on the right is the back of the canvas. And for me, it's so interesting to be able to see how Zulia has returned to this piece and added numerous marks in reference to different exhibitions that it's been in. Um, she also adds sometimes different names over the years. Um, but something that I find so interesting and unique about her work also are these arrows indicating what is up. And as you can see, up is up as we're presenting it at El Museo vertically. Um, and up is also a horizontal view. And I should note that at the previous iterations of the show Soy Isla at Phillips and Ponce, um, this particular piece was presented horizontally. So at El Museo, um, we're, we were able to use Zulia's modular approach to present it from a different angle. And I'll return to that concept. Uh, but just again to show you something interesting about the back of her pieces, many people think that her work is hollow that if you turn it around, you'll actually be able to see the, the shape of it. But as you can see, you know, they're fully wrapped, um, fully wrapped works. So returning um, to the beginning of the show, starting with this chronological approach, the first room, um, in addition to having this introductory Soy Isla presentation, we see um, some of Zelia's earliest works from her time in Cuba, um, including her self-portrait. Um, this piece from 1954, it's the only true self-portrait that um, is on view in the presentation, but I think um, I'm very open to talking about how we can think about Zelia's work in terms of biography, um, even when it's not what we typically think of as a self-portrait. This piece, you can see she's already on the go, already ready to, to follow her artistic career, which will take her in so many directions. Uh, but what's also interesting is that you can see these lines that are constant in her early work and that she carries into her, um, into her contemporary practice. Zilia is still very much working as an artist. 
So these pieces are examples of the early work that Zelia was exhibiting while she was in Havana, very young. Um, Zelia was actually had a lot of success quite early. She had a number of solo exhibitions at the Lyceum, at various galleries. She presented in the 1959 Sao Paulo Biennial. And um, many people, I think, that they're struck when they see these early works, that they seem quite different from what we've come to know of Zelia and her shaped canvas with their very subdued um, color palette. Um, but again, I want to especially point to the, this interest in the line that we'll begin to see um, threaded throughout. And Zilio was participating in a number of exhibitions with um, a group of artists in Cuba called Los Once. And they were, um, they're considered, you know, the third generation, let's say, of modern artists on the island. And they were really beginning to explore abstraction and in particular, um, gestural abstraction. Uh, these works that you see here, they're also Zilia's early works from Cuba, the 1950s, and they have quite interesting um, title. These are her Afro-Cubans, her Afro-Cuban works. And when we think about uh, the painting scene in Cuba, you know, we also think about Wifredo Lam. Certainly, I think uh, Zilia knew Wifredo, um, was aware of his work. Um, but very interestingly, in recent years, Zilia has even referred to herself as a um, minimalist mulata. Um, and so, you know, these thoughts about, um, about race, about coming from Cuba, about having mixed blood, um, as well as the line are something that she's thinking about from a very early moment. Um, I understand that some people are asking about the medium of these works. Uh, Zulia tends to work in acrylic, and um, that's a great question, and we'll, we'll come, to, come back to that about her process in a few minutes. Um, and here are some early images of Cuba. On the left, you see Zulia in her um, studio in Havana. And at right, I already mentioned that she was quite successful and in showing her work in international venues. Um, so this is an image from the Sao Paulo Biennial. So from Cuba, we move into the 1960s. And Zilia came to New York in 1960, in fact. Um, one of the reasons we were so happy to host the exhibition is because Zilia did spend time here in New York City. She lived in the Upper East Side for a while. Um, and so the works that you're seeing here, they're all pieces that uh, she produced while she was in New York City. Something very interesting about her time here, um, of course, she was seeing the art world of the time, but a lot of her, the people she was associating with were poets, playwrights, um, Zulia worked at a publishing house, um, producing illustrations and covers. She also worked as a sonographer on um, a number of different theater productions, something that she was already doing while she was still in Cuba. And um, I'm very proud also of this wall because of this print that you saw in the middle. Um, this is a piece that has been in El Museo's collection for some time. Um, and you'll notice this was a donation by Servando Sacaluga, who was a university press professor at Columbia. And he was a friend of Zelia's. Um, part of these poetry circles that she was associating with, we're very grateful to him that he was able to donate this print. And this print, um, it's very interesting because it appears on a number of the poetry journals that Zulia was writing the covers for. Um, and also, I find this image on the right so interesting. This is from a gallery exhibition that Zulia um, had in Madrid. And you can see a number of the editions of the print, how they were exhibited at the time, um, the sense of seriality. And again, we'll think about, um, I think Zulia has an approach to um, modularity and to seriality. So it's very interesting for me to be able to see how they were actually exhibited at the time. 
Um, this is also an, an additional work, this very diminutive piece that you see here on the left and you see it in profile on the right. Once again, you can see how the up is not always up. If you look on the side of this presentation, the up arrow is pointing downwards. Um, at the Phillips Collection, this piece was actually presented on a column, on a plinth, so it was resting horizontally. But um, this is the earliest piece in the show that exhibits um, sort of shaped canvas, this three-dimensionality that we get so used to in her work. Um, and I... Zilia has attributed, we don't know exactly when she began working with these shaped canvases. There is not one first shaped canvas, let's say, um, but this is the earliest one in the show. And Zilia has shared a memory that um, her father died in 1955, and she recalls that after his death, his bedsheet was washed and was hanging on a, a clothing line. And she recalls seeing it in the wind, hitting the different surfaces, and that she attributes that as the inspiration for um, beginning this three-dimensionality, this exploration of three-dimensionality in her work. Something else I want to point out about this piece is um, you might notice that the dates are very interesting. They're dated, it's dated from 1956 to 1999. This is something that we'll see in a number of the pieces um, because Zelia, it's very interesting. She often goes back to her own work and she starts adding these lines. And these lines, again, they recall some of those earlier canvases that we saw from Cuba. Um, she calls these tattoos and we'll continue to see them as we move throughout the space. So, Zelia can perhaps correct us later during the question and answer, but um, I don't think she liked New York very much. <laughs> can imagine it's cold here. Um, I know Zelia had to have a lot of different jobs to sustain herself. And uh, I think some of this, this, the toughness of New York, you can see in these works here, um, which are so, again, so different from the shaped canvases. I would say that the 1960s are really a period of exploration for Zilia, um, where she is absorbing a lot of different contemporary trends. Throughout the 60s, even though she's here in New York, she's also traveling a lot to Europe um, on different grants. Uh, she goes to study at the Prado. She studies conservation. She also visits her friend Severo Sardui in Paris. And so, some of these works that you see here, um, they really remind us a bit of the international informel scene that Zelia would have seen um, when she was in Madrid and in Paris. Artists like Tapier, like Fontana. And these works, I mean, uh, sadly, you know, the virtual can only take us so far, but you can see that they're very dense um, and they're very experimental in the types of materials that Zelia was using. So she adds things like sawdust and dirt, and even the names of these pieces are, um, are titles like tierra, earth, agua, water. And just moving back to the previous image, you can see um, in, in this piece that's all the way to the, to the left, the sort of combination of both the shaped canvas, the projecting out, as well as that um, rough gestural materiality. So moving forward, um, we, we finally arrived at, at the shaped canvases. Um, and some of this work, here we see Zilia with her friend Severo Sardui, who I already mentioned. This is an image of the two of them in Paris. And um, Severo was not only a friend, but he was also, um, he was a critic, he was a poet, he wrote for a number of Zelia's catalogs, even dating back to their time in Cuba. And he was really a, a point of connection, uniting Zelia with some of the artistic circles in Paris and also introducing her to different concepts about semiotics. 
Um, and something very, and, and you can see this um, idea of the semiotics in this very beautiful detailed drawing called um, the signified of the signifier. And something that Severo also contributed to Zilia's career was he helped coin this phrase, um, erotic topology, um, in reference to these really beautiful, sensual, bodily um, shaped canvases that uh, is what we are come to, come to regard Zilia's work so highly for. So, um, a caveat of these images is that these works, they're so, um, they're so delicate and Zelia has such a pronounced interest in um, the color palette. Um, someone earlier was asking about what, what are these pieces made of? These are canvas and acrylic. And Zelia has said that she had to use acrylic because acrylic is slow drying so that it wouldn't create cracks in the surfaces of these pieces. Um, the works that you see here and throughout the show, I should add that the majority of what we're seeing are all from private collections. This is maybe one exception, this wall to the left, um, you see a work from a private collection and then that beautiful white monochrome is from the Museo de Arte de Ponce. At the center we see a work from the Princeton University Museum and at right we see a piece from the Guggenheim Museum. And I only bring that up because Although Zelia is very well regarded in Puerto Rico um, and has an ardent following, I think that a lot of institutions have been slow to collect her work, um, similar to so many women artists. And so, you know, thankfully we have many, um, many private collections that are willing to donate, but it's really the exception rather than the rule. Um, I wanted to show you this detailed image of these two pieces for a few reasons. Um, this blue work that we're seeing in profile at the right, you can see an image of it as Zelia is painting it in this invitation from this 1970 exhibition. And for me, it's very interesting how the work changes when it moves from a vertical presentation on the wall to being horizontal on the work table. Um, even as a curator during the installation, it was very striking when we had these works on the tables. They really have a very palpable human presence. Sometimes they were even uncanny. They felt like bodies in the room. Um, and these works, again, uh, they really breathe. They're organic structures. I also wanted to show this particular image because um, on the left you can see uh, the Guggenheim work that I already spoke about earlier, this piece was only exhibited in El Museo's presentation. Um, and I wanted to include it because I think it offers a really interesting study of contrasts and how Zilia often uses many of the same forms, many of the same shapes, many of the same colors, and yet by just um, very subtle manipulations, the works can change so drastically. So in these two works, they're actually quite similar. Um, and just by sort of inverting the palette, by um, turning them upside down, they appear almost like a positive and like a negative. So again, this is just to show you an overview of the space. So to make us all reminisce about being in, in El Museo's galleries together. And with that, we enter the next room. Um, so this, I believe, is where El Museo's presentation really departs from the presentations at Ponce and at um, the Phillips collection. Because in this room, we break a bit from the chronology. So previous, we saw the 1950s in Cuba, we saw the 1960s in New York, as well as um, the beginning of her shaped canvases. Um, but in this room, we see a number of works from different periods. And what unites this room is rather that they're all dedicated to the subject of um, female warriors, female heroines, um, many of them rooted in mythology. So, what you see in these two detailed views, we have Antigone, 
on the left, and we see the Trojan women on the right. Um, Zilia uses words like um, the Amazons to describe her work. She calls them foodias. She's even called herself a foodia, which I love. Um, and one of the one idea that we have for why Zilia may have turned to mythology is again, I'm thinking back to her associations with some of the poets and the playwrights in New York and going back to Cuba, who were also thinking about classical mythology. And so, in fact, she actually was the scenographer for a play of Antigone. So this image that you see on the left, there was once a six foot tall version of this that was used for a, a theater production. So we don't know where it is today. Maybe one day we'll find it. Um, but it's, it's amazing to see and to go back to scale so that you can see what it looks like on the wall. Um, here it is. Uh, the other work that you see paired next to it is Joan of Arc. It's one of the largest canvases in El Museo's exhibition. Um, and again, I think it's so interesting to think about why was it that Zulia was celebrating these um, female warriors and these heroines. There's something, um, although these are abstract pieces, you know, there's something very powerful, these feminist readings that we can um, find in these works, uh, very much celebrating the power of women um, and, and their ability to survive. Um, so I, I think that's quite interesting. And again, it goes back to this metaphoric interpretation um, that you can find in her pieces. On a similar note, um, again, this next room departs from the chronology and then it's instead is dedicated to the theme of the moon, the lunar. Um, so here we see uh, to the left, a, a almost like a nocturnal moon, a nocturnal lunar, this black and blue piece. Um, in the center, we see a small maquette, and we'll show you another image of that in just a moment. And then to the right, almost like a parallel, um, or again, another play on this idea of positive and negative in this very uh, subtle, subtle palette, white moon. Here again, you can see the bulges of these pieces. And this idea of the lunar, it's quite interesting. Um, for those of you who are bilingual, you might recall that the word lunar, it's also the same word that's used as the birthmark. Um, of course, the moon itself has so many um, mythological significances. Um, it has to do with cycles of time, also, I think luminosity and light is very much um, present in Zilia's works. Uh, we can see how the light really bounces off these pieces as they uh, project into space. And um, the Caribbean moon is something that Zilia has referred to as being um, quite important for her, especially as a child. I think she recalled that when she used to cry, her mother would take her outside to look at the moon. So it's very interesting to think about all of these um, biographical relationships, um, these cyclical relationships. <clears throat> and uh, in a number of these works, again, we return to this concept of the tattoo. So here, this is a topology that I think bears some um, aesthetic uh, relations with the, the circular moons that we see. And you can see um, that inscribed on top of this piece are these beautiful sinuous uh, lines that Zilia has um, in some cases added later. And uh, if we were in the galleries, you could actually look upside down and see that some of these lines con continue to the underside. Um, and here again, this is a detail of the lunar con tatuaje. Um, the, luna, the moon with the tattoo, the big white tattoo. And you can see um, just how freely Zilia has, um, has gone back over her canvas and in pen, in ink, has added these very loose lines that the closer you look, I think um, there's a lot of very interesting details that you can find. You see hands, 
you begin to see eyes. There's some instances of, um, of stamps, in fact. And again, thinking about the light and the importance of light, um, this is something that I've, I've never seen before. I think it's so amazing, but um, Zilia often takes her pieces to the beach to photograph them. And so a number of the works that we have on view in the exhibition, um, this is what you're looking at is a vitrine that we have in the show with some of the works that we've already seen. So you can see that beautiful um, black and blue moon standing on the sand. Um, it's quite surprising. Uh, I find these images almost surreal and uncanny, um, but they're, they're amazing and they're real feats because if we go back to look at these pieces, I mean, these are, these are quite, quite large. So with that, we move into the final room and I'm glad that we have plenty of time for, for question and answers. Um, and this final room, it really, again, um, I think the way we wanted to present this work is to really uh, celebrate this idea of Soy Isla. So the work that you see on the left, this two panel piece, this modular piece is again from the Soy Isla series. Um, the image that you see at the center is called Maquinista, and that was collected by the Phillips Collection um, in honor of this exhibition. And then these two blue images, which you can see a close-up of here, these are works that were produced in 2018. So Zilia, I mean, as you can see, she's here with us today. She's still very much um, working and creating art, which is amazing to think about over seven decades of production. Um, and so we, we really wanted to be able to show this full circle. Um, before we transition a bit, I wanted to conclude um, with a focused look about this piece which is called Repression. And again, in the background, you can see the Joan of Arc that we talked about earlier. Um, this piece, Repression, at first glance, it's so strikingly different from the rest of what we've seen. Um, this work was actually created for an exhibition that was held on, the, on 1998, on the 100th year anniversary of um, Puerto Rico, transitioning to um, US occupation from Spain. And the work itself is called Repression. You can see cement that has been literally pressed upon by these um, um, barbed uh, grates that you might see or associate on a window. And again, at first, when I first saw this piece, it seemed so strange in the context of her work, but um, the closer you get, there's actually a real suppleness to this material, the way it sort of balloons around the iron. Um, and it almost even looks like a pillow, in fact. Um, it's, it's such an interesting piece. And there's so much more to talk about. I feel like I haven't been able to uh, say everything that I wanted about every single piece. I hope we have. Um, I'll look through the question and answers before we go. Uh, but I wanted to add, that um, this exhibition is accompanied by a really wonderful catalog that was produced by the Phillips Collection, which I recommend. And the chronology that you're seeing here, I know it's too small for you to see, it is available on El Museo's website. If you'd like to go back and visit um, the exhibition page to learn more about Zulia. And um, before we, we enter the question and answer, I'm just going to turn on um, at least a brief snippet of a video that was produced um, for the show. Ser una isla es que una isla que todo tiene ahí y pertenecen a una, a una sola cosa. 
porque yo era uno de ellos. Soy isla, comprende lo que es mi No es un egoísmo. El sentimiento tuyo no es de nadie. Es mío. Well, the, the video continues. I'm afraid I pressed the button. Again, that's also available um, on El Museo's website as well as on YouTube. Um, I think that perhaps uh, before, if anyone has question and answers and they want to add that into the chat, um, I'm happy to help answer them or perhaps Zilia can also answer them. Uh, Zilia, I, are you, Zilia, quieres hablar un poco más con nosotros? Hola, Silvia. I know it can be hard as we're all coming in from um, so many places, but um, Silvia, ¿quieres eh, compartir algo con nosotros? Mira. Estoy muy agradecida, emocionada, es tanto lo que me han ayudado siempre. Gracias. And I should add, um, the image that we're seeing right now on the screen is Zilia in her studio, in, in her home studio in Santurce, um, which sadly was um, impacted by Hurricane Maria. Um, it has been rebuilt and um, Zilia is there right now. I also wanted to add that Zilia, in addition to her own amazing artistic practice, um, when she moved to Puerto Rico in 1970, she began working as a professor at the um, Liga de Arte and the Escuela de Arte. And she's really served a very important um, mentorship figure to so many generations of artists um, that she has such an important place in not only the art history of Puerto Rico for her own visual production, but also for this very important role in supporting younger artists. Um, someone has, again, gone back, uh, has asked about how the, um, how the structures are made. Zilia, no sé si quieres eh, explicar cómo, cómo haces las obras. Sí. Puedes despedirte ahora, si quieres, si quieres saludarlo a todos, saludar a todas las personas, saludar aquí, habla por aquí, habla y mira que está por aquí. Sí. Ella está preguntando que cómo hace tu obra, Silvia. Tienes que hablar para saludar a las personas y despedirte. Pero tienes que hablar. Sí, sí, sí. Ella está preguntando. Que muchas gracias. Que... Pues gracias, Silvia. Gracias. Eh, gracias. Estoy tan emocionada que, que no tengo casi palabras para, para agradecerte. Gracias, Silvia. No, eh, it's, 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 muchas gracias. Gracias. Well, I, I, I would love for the last word, um, but just to say a little bit about her, about her own um, production of the shaped canvases. Um, I like to think of them um, as uh, bodices almost, where they have ribbings or tubes that help create um, some of these structures that we see, but they're literally canvases that are wrapped around these shapes. Um, and again, we saw in the very beginning how the back of them are actually enclosed. So um, it's very interesting. There's actually air, you know, held between um, these forms. 
Uh, I don't know if we have any questions. Um, I'm also so grateful to you all for joining us here at El Museo. I'm trying to keep up with the questions on the chat. And um, thank you all for joining us. Uh, I want to give special thanks, of course, to the artists. Um, and I want to encourage you all to please stay tuned for upcoming exhibitions and programs that are going to be held in conjunction with this program, El Museo and Tu Casa series. And um, to encourage you that if you enjoyed the tour, to please um, consider making a donation to El Museo so that we can continue to bring you virtual programs and more especially so that we can hopefully welcome you back into the galleries in real life, which I know we're all missing so much right now. So thank you again, everyone, for joining us tonight. It was really special. And gracias, Delia. It was incredible to see you. Con mucho amor. <laughs>